Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am your host George here to update you. Everyone knew that burn pits were a source of toxins that led to many types of cancer and other illnesses. That was really wrong. Veterans who got sick while fighting for our country because they were exposed to these toxins should not have to fight for years in the V to get the benefits they earn. Congress is going to make big changes now. It might be possible for low-income families to get a new kind of help in just a few weeks. You might be able to get a bonus check for up to $500 if you're having trouble paying your rent. 20 states have already failed to raise the minimum wage above the federal level of $7, 25 cents an hour. 16. More than 12% of everyone's children live in poverty. People who work to fight poverty say this is a sign that lawmakers need to increase spending and do more to help families who are having a hard time. The second goal could have been reached by expanding the child tax credit before the end of the year, but liberals and Republicans couldn't agree on how to include it in the spending bill. Some people say that raising the minimum wage wouldn't make things better as quickly or badly. But a 2019 study found that raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour would help more than 500,000 people get out of poverty. The Economic Policy Institute predicted in 2021 that if Congress passed a $15 minimum wage increase by 2025, up to 4 million people, including 1.3 million children, would no longer have to live in poverty. But there are politicians in Congress who want to keep sending money to families to help them out. In a letter sent so far, Congressman Adam Schiff asks the House to extend the increased child tax credit as soon as possible. Millions of families in California and across the country use the monthly payouts from the child tax credit to pay for things like food, rent, and school costs. The American Rescue Plan has greatly increased the number of people who can receive its benefits by removing a rule about family income that prevented the poorest families from getting the full credit. But from July to December, the number of poor children dropped by almost 40%, reaching a new low of 5.2. In just one month, 3 million people were lifted out of poverty. But Congress has put almost 10 million kids in danger across the country. Folks, this is bad because Congress is split, so advocates are looking to the states to improve benefits for workers and families. At the same time, the Democrats' plan to pass four weeks of paid federal family leave is falling apart in the Senate, leaving workers and businesses to figure out a patchwork of rules. It's pretty risky that this is done state by state. According to the rules, millions of Americans and their families need help. This means that something needs to be done right away, since 13 states and the District of Columbia have already passed paid family leave laws this year. Even though 14 states and D. C. Have paid sick leave laws. About 28 million workers still don't have promised paid sick time. People who worked for FDR and were great, like Francis Perkins once said that the goal of government should be to make sure that everyone has the best life possible. Okay, that's it. That's the duty. That's why we're here. I can't say we're done yet because even though we've made it possible for this to be the best time in New York's history, the dream will stay out of reach for many if they don't feel safe in their neighborhoods or can't afford to buy a home or pay their rent. People are already leaving and we can't ignore these signs. I know this all too well because I grew up in western New York when jobs were very hard to come by. That can't take place again. It doesn't have to be that way, though. I'm going to talk about some of the most important measures that will make New York safer, cheaper, and better for living in today. Let me tell you how we're going to do that. Keeping people in New York safe has always been and will always be my first concern. And there hasn't been a day when I haven't been completely focused on. Buy gas or electricity. This is going to happen for sure. The Secretary of Finance also said that people who live in Delaware must have valid social security numbers, mailing addresses in Delaware, and ID cards that are still good in order to apply. Lawmakers were supposed to pass this bill in April. The money is meant to help make up for the rise in the state's cost of living caused by inflation. The refund, up to $300, is only given to people who live in Idaho. Joint filers can get $600. The person must have lived in Idaho for the whole year in 2020 and 2021 and also filed their individual income tax for those years in order to get the refund. The amount someone gets depends on how much money they have. The governor and the state legislature of Idaho, 
agreed to a rebate plan in September during a special session of the state legislature. It was a part of a bigger bill worth a billion dollars that also cut taxes and spent money on education and other things. The governor's office said that the refund could help people who are having trouble with money because of inflation. The Idaho State Tax Commission says that by the end of March, about 800,000 refunds worth $500 million will have been sent out. Late in September, the state tax office began sending out the rebates. They plan to send out even more payments as more people qualify. The Idaho State Tax Commission said that rebates can be sent through direct deposit or by mail. However, any back taxes that the taxpayer still needs to pay will be taken out of the final rebate by the tax officials. If you live in Idaho, you can now use the Where is My Rebate tool to find out where your check is. For a long time, Nancy Pelosi has been known for her skill at getting Democratic politicians to vote hard for important bills. Many people thought that Nancy Pelosi, who has led the House Democrats since 2003, would step down next year to make room for a new group of leaders. Now, the midterm election results have changed the equation, at least for some Democrats, as the party may only have a very small majority left after all the votes are counted. Sources close to the situation say that Pelosi has been approached by several members who want her to keep her job in the new Congress, even if the party doesn't win enough seats to keep its majority. This shows that she has been successful in keeping the party together. Drew Hamill, who works for Pelosi, said he didn't know when the lawmaker would make any comments. In a statement, Hamill said that the speaker would make an announcement when she made an announcement. She also said that a party needs to win 218 of the 435 seats in the House in order to control it. Insider says that, as of November 12, the Republicans have won 210 seats and the Democrats have won 198 seats. The House is now controlled by Democrats, 220 to 212. The last time Republicans had control of the lower house was in January when they gave their majority to the Democratic Party. They had lost seats in 2018 and the midterms. Pelosi was Speaker of the House from 2007 to 2011 and was re-elected in 2019. Let's see what Vice President Biden does about this.